Okay, somebody uh, asked me uh, what kind of bows I'm using right now. And those three are the ones I have strung for this week. And they're the ones I'm primarily using. I've done some modifications to the 60-inch uh, Mandarin Duck um, Black Hunter. This is the combat archery rig that I modified, and I've done some modifications to it, and I'll show you those here in a sec. The one in the middle is the 50-pound PMZ Mongolian uh, bow, and the one on the right there is the 35-pound PMZ, also Mongolian horse bow. Um, I'm also looking at doing some modifications to the arrow you see here. And the only thing I've really done is I put a 200 grain field point on this and um, also this is a bamboo shaft. Uh, this is the Kanakai uh, armor piercing arrows that um, I got and used against the armor that did not really penetrate anything. I need a much heavier bow for that and I did use the 60 pound on that. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna have to go 80 or 110, something to that degree to get any results for piercing 18 gauge uh, mild steel Roman uh, segmented armor. And that would work out much better because I have a helmet too. And I really don't want to shoot that one because that was a get dressed for battle uh, or uh, centurion helmet or, or commander's helmet. And I don't, you know, those are harder to come by from that specific company. So that being said, I got some arrows. Um, I'm going to be uh, trying out for target practice or accuracy. Uh, the ones I built and the uh, Turkish bows will be, uh, I'll string one or two of them next week and use those. Um... I don't really use the 60 uh, uh, the Deer Seeker too much. I did for a little bit, and it's really accurate. Uh, I did really well with it. It does have a lot of power. And But today, tomorrow, Saturday and, yeah, Saturday and Sunday, today being Thursday, we're not supposed to have any bad weather at all. It's going to be like in the mid to low 70s right now. For a day or two and then go back up into the 80s and then we start getting back up into the closer to the 90s and thunderstorms again for a good long while um so i'm gonna try and get outside and get some shooting done this weekend also um which i'll probably do the uh, turkish horse bows probably tomorrow or rather saturday and sunday and, and run those for a week but this is endurance right here so um, tomorrow I'll do a check with my scale and see where the, uh, if it's still close to 50, it's still close to 35, or the other one's still close to 60. As of right now, I don't have a knocking point on the Mandarin duck, but I'll be showing you the modifications on that here in a sec. Um, I may put a knocking point on it, I may not. I may go and get another uh, finger protector that works really well, but they don't last that long. When you use the bow as you do for combat archery, you're shooting three, four, five arrows as rapidly as you can. And it puts a lot of stress on all the components of the bow to include the shafts of the arrows. You got to check for reflex for uh, safety a lot when you're, when you're running uh, combat archery drills or uh, just shooting in general and you notice that your arrow is not hitting right or funny, you need to not use that arrow because there's a deficiency in that arrow. And that's already been shown. Uh, one of the guys, All Things Archery, uh, did uh, a video on his uh, three-month recovery for uh, his accident when the arrow wasn't acting correctly. So those things do happen. Uh, you don't look forward to it, but... Um, I get a few bumps and scrapes from them as well on my thumb. Eventually, you know, one of them will explode and you'll have that problem. It's always good to have a handguard on and I'm going to get me another one. I have some, but they're um, not thick enough. I'm going to get me a much, much thicker version of that 
arm guard, hand guard, slash, you know, don't um, hurt yourself type thing. So we'll get on with the modifications on the combat rig I got here, and I'll show you what I got going on. All right, so as I said, I've taken the uh, little piece off here that was a finger protector, and I can use this for thumb ring because it's also left side. I don't have a thumb ring on, but the thickness of the string is good. Uh, this should be a 16 strand. It could be a 14. I don't know. I have not counted this. It's caked with wax right now. So this is the only thing. When you do, do, do a knocking point, you want to knock and have the knock slightly above level. That's level. And then you want to go up a little bit. All right. So you'll notice that I have a fletching here that's been cut up. When I put my arrow on, this helps it stabilize because when you slap it on, it can pop back off when you're trying to pull back. So that will happen, and that's the way it is. And this holds on to it. It's not real sturdy uh, or real stiff, but it does help, believe that. Now, when you're above, the level line of level this will lift the arrow up and you'll go past your shelf a little bit you can contour with this it's a shelf bow you really don't have to to get your hand out of the way but the knocking point above level helps get that arrow aligned because the force of the string is going to take over all the physical characteristics of the shaft and it should lift it right up and you should go over and your fletchings really don't do anything as far as catch the shelf even though I've got a, a beaver skin thingy on there or whatever animal that is probably a skunk for all my luck all right so um, with that you have a very good chance of not having to cotter too much with a shelf bow, even though with this setup you really could. Now, I've shown you in previous videos how to file this part down because it would rest right in this groove of your hand, this uh, line you have in your hand that goes down to your wrist. So when you do shoot 10, 15, 20 arrows and you come to pull off, you don't feel it right away, but the next morning when you go try to grab the bow, you feel the pain of all the fatigue, muscle fatigue, in your hand. So you have to grind that down with a rasping file and smooth it out. Don't leave any splinters. I mean, I went all the way down to 5,000 grit on this. So it's nice and smooth. Still feels a little bit, but it's, it doesn't bite half as bad or near as bad as when I didn't have anything going on. So when you have that, little piece right there you really notice it but it doesn't hinder your loading process at all so that's the good thing it really works to work your bows so they work for you so yeah I mean it makes more sense and then and, and, you know that's just fletching glue it works great no big deal um, Mandarin duck, 60 inch, 60 pound at 28 inches. Says it all right here. You gotta get you one. But this is the left hand version and you modify it for right hand use. So, cool. All right, so this is one of the clouds that came through yesterday from the storm system that finally left. I think we've got it clear for four days. Like I said, hopefully we'll be able to get out this weekend and do some stuff Saturday and Sunday. It just all depends upon the wind. Today it's a little too windy to throw arrows um, around the house. Um, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna have to go and head to the park or uh, go to the north end of town and do it that way. So that way there's no issue with safety. So this is the reason why for the past couple of weeks I haven't been able to get outside. A lot of storm systems coming through after the hurricane pulled all that Canadian air down, causing the cold air to clash with the hot air, and boom, thunderstorms all over the place. 
as you know, with a duratio uh, a couple days ago. So, yeah, 